Well, good morning, young people. Welcome to Daily Bread. Uh, Apostle Chastine Rock here. Uh, again, thank you for your attention. Uh, you guys are up early in the morning watching this, or you might be doing this during the middle of the day. Uh, but whatever time it is, it's time to always eat uh, the Word of God. We call this Daily Bread because it gives us something to feed on, which is the Word of God that our spirit man grows on. So uh, I thank you. As always, uh, you guys are a great uh, audience to speak to and to bring uh, you guys into greater faith. Uh, we do this every day, except Saturday and Sunday, every day, so that you who begin your work week, whether it's at home or whether you're traveling to work, uh, that you have uh, something to uh, encourage you every morning uh, as you go out, because you know you are a vessel of light and you're going out into a dark world. Now, there may be many other vessels of light around you, but you as an individual, you still have to confront everything that comes into your life. And, uh, and this is what the Word of God teaches us. You know, the Word of God, God is love. God, this, the Word is not a hate crime. The Word of God is like a traffic sign, right? If you see a traffic sign that says stop, the light is red, but you persistently keep going through it one day because of your persistent actions, guess what you're going to do? You're going to cause your, either an accident to happen with you and somebody else or somebody else having an accident because of you uh, you could die or someone else could be killed because of your continued actions. And this is what the Word of God brings to us. It brings us the particulars that we choose. God says, choose life and death. And so we have to choose every day. And I pray that God is not number 34 in your choices. I pray that he's the first, the first of everything that you choose and the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding of how to make every day a day of progression in the kingdom of God. Not making God 24 or 35, uh, that's not going to help you in the situations of life. Now this week, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the working of the blood of Jesus. And uh, sometimes we label it as the power of the blood of Jesus. Uh, but the, the working of the, work of the blood of Jesus, it takes care of every area of our life, okay? Uh, because as I am, with you now, I'm speaking to you, okay, about increasing your faith, about making the Word of God a priority, about uh, starting every day with the Word of God, as we call this particular program, uh, you know, Daily Bread. Uh, it's, it's a thing about making God the priority, choosing. And when I understand the power, the working, the ability of the blood of Jesus, and especially when we're just coming off resurrection, uh, you know, you, you get to a place where you have a greater protection around you every day, a greater uh, ability to continue to go on and stay out of condemnation, okay, and to always release things that come against you that try to hold you back. This is the working of the blood of Jesus. Now, if your blood could have did this, uh, and it never would have, uh, because your blood uh, is the blood that created uh, the sin in your life, and it created the debt, the depth, the debt in your life toward God that could not be paid by your blood. Only the spotless blood of Jesus coming from another realm could come in and operate in a man's life and a body to present that for our behalf. As we always say, it takes a free man to set a slave free. And Jesus is always a free man. So let's go to uh, the book of Leviticus real quick. We're going to look at what it says about the blood uh, here. And then we're going to go to the book of Hebrews to show you what we're going to be working on this week. Because again, if I understand what this blood, not just, you know, sometimes we never taught about the power of the blood. You know, and uh, I've heard Pastor Milton teach on the blood before. It's powerful messages about how the blood obtains certain things for us uh, in the court of heaven. You, you need to understand what it does for you personally so that you may apply it to your life every day. In Leviticus chapter 17, in verse 11, okay? Now, this is the Lord God using the blood of bulls and goats and things and the Day of Atonement. All these things represented Jesus on the cross, okay? Represented how God was going to use the life of something else to substitute for our sinful life all right, until the time of the Messiah getting here so that he could substitute his life for all mankind so that mankind, God's 
You know, we call ourselves God's greatest creation uh, because we are speaking spirits. God's greatest creation could be redeemed back to the Lord, okay? In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, it says this, for the life, and you need to underline that, okay? For the life of the flesh. So you need to underline that word life there because it represents what's going on inside of your flesh, okay? And today, some people have a lot of problems going on inside of their flesh, which is showing us that it's, maybe it's not so much life in us, but there may be death operating in our flesh, okay? And we need to understand this power, the deliverance of the blood of Jesus so that that working can continue to work in our lives. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, okay? So we see that the life is contained in the blood. And if there are things that are tremendously wrong, we could say that the death of the flesh is in the blood because that's the first thing, you know, that they examine you when you go. They want to check your blood. They want to see what's going on. And they notice those things through your blood, okay? And, he, and this is what the Lord says. And I have given it, all right, to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So this is why he's saying the life of the flesh is in the blood. That blood that was given upon the altar was for our benefit uh, through these teachings here from the Old Testament all the way up until the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, go with me to Hebrews real quick. All right, Hebrews chapter 12, because this is what the rest of our week is going to be based on. Okay? In Hebrews chapter 12, okay? All right, you there? Good. Verse uh, 24, okay? Again, now, this is just a foundational thing for us to work on so that we can have this whole week uh, because the blood did many things for different areas of our life. Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. This is what you and I, if we are born again, we live under a new covenant. That's in here. We're going to talk about a little bit of that tomorrow. All right? To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, okay, that speaketh better things than that of Abel, Okay? Now, we're talking about the blood that Jesus shared, okay? That was, it's called the blood of sprinkling, okay? As the blood of bulls and goats and things were in the Old Testament, there's blood of sprinkling. But it says that this blood that was sprinkled, that it is speaking now. And this is what we're going to be dealing with uh, this week, helping you to understand that every area of your life, whatever's going on, the blood has a conversation against anything that's not producing life. Okay, the blood of Jesus, because there's life in that blood. Okay, so hang with us this week. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, again, I thank you guys for joining us. Uh, for everyone, uh, we're going to look at God's traffic signs for life this week so that we may present ourselves every day in a place of recovery, restoration, restitution, or uh, whatever, reward, whatever for our lives because God has promised us life through the blood of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you here tomorrow morning. Apostle Chastain Rock, signing off in Jesus' name. Amen.